Today, we are gonna learn how to clean this little beauty. For this process, we're gonna need a couple of new tools, things that we don't normally use. So, we've got air duster, we've got my little screwdriver, some Q-tips, and disposable rag paper towel, a bucket, and a big gallon of machine oil. So, let's get this machine opened up and start with some cleaning. To get started, we are gonna remove some of these pieces so that they're out of our way and we don't get our fingers caught. So let's get the presser foot off and let's get that needle off. I'm just loosening these screws enough to pull these off. Uh, I actually don't re-tighten them immediately. I just tighten them when I put them back on. So set those off to the side. Now we've got two pieces to our throat plate here. This little guy is like a secret trap door. This allows us to kind of see down into the machine without lifting the whole head up, which we are actually gonna lift it up this time, but this can help when you're trying to see just the bobbin casing from up above without like getting down under the machine. Now, we're gonna go lefty loosey. These screws can be a little bit hard to unscrew because they are totally flush against the machine, of course, because you don't want fabric getting caught on them. Uh, so, and the angle is a little weird because you got the machine right in your way. So I just get them far enough so that I can unscrew them with my hands. And then I will keep a magnet on the top of the machine here to pop those right on, ooh, <laughs> to pop those right onto along with the needle so that I don't lose those. All right, now we're back getting this guy off. All right. And I'm gonna pop him up here too. Boop. Okay, now this plate literally just lifts right off. Look at that, wow. Okay, so we can already see a couple of things, mainly ee, all of this grime. And all of this kind of fuzz is coming from the thread fibers and the fabric fibers, especially because we do have an automatic cutter in this machine. But also it's getting mixed with the oil that is running throughout the machine from the reservoir below. We'll look at that a little bit later. So we're gonna start by cleaning off this throat plate and examining the throat plate. Why do we need to do that? Because the needle can get misaligned and that can happen from a lot of things, sewn through beads and sequins, sewn through heavier fabric. When that happens, you see all of these little jagged marks around the needle hole opening. That is from that misalignment. Happens where happens, it's completely normal, but you wanna keep an eye on this area and make sure that this throat plate isn't getting bent out of shape. So from the top, we're looking at this section right there, and we wanna make sure that that isn't getting bent down below so that it's bent out of whack, because that can affect our tension, sewing in general, no good. That's when we want to replace this. This piece is not expensive. So when you think that it's time, just get rid of it. Throw it away, get a new one, because that can have a huge impact on the quality of your sewing. For right now, as I'm feeling it, I'm also feeling the relief with my thumb. I think that this one is still in great shape. We're just gonna set it aside after we rub all of that dirt off of it and we're gonna replace that back on. So good to go, let's set that one aside. Now for the yucky stuff. Look at all this, let me get my tweezers here. Black, we'll get all that junk. All of these threads and fibers can have a huge impact on the quality of your sewing. It messes with the tension, it gets wrapped up in the little metal moving parts of the machine. Gross, gross, gross. So I am going to clean that out using a couple of things. I've got my tweezers here, I've got my little Q-tips here, but also I have a little tool that some would agree with me is one of the best ways to clean this out and some would not agree with me. So uh, let's find out what the consensus is. Canned air. 
I love this guy. I'll lift up the machine in just a little bit, but just to give you an idea of what is below this, this section of the machine is not the oil trough. The oil like reservoir is from here over, from here down is opening straight down to the floor. So I am using the straw and I am going to angle my bursts through the opening straight down to where I can vacuum later. And I'm just giving it little bursts, but I really find that helpful for getting into those really hard to reach places. Ooh, that's great. Okay, now, I'm gonna take it even one step further and loosen the screws on my feed dogs. So these are another piece that start to wear down. Normal wear, completely fine, but they can be replaced and they do need to be. I would say with the amount of sewing that we do here where we're using the machines every single day, I don't replace them more than once a year. Um, but I'd love input on that actually. So comment if I'm doing that too frequent or infrequent, because I'd love to know. So I'm gonna take this, ooh, those little screws are so small. Look at how small that is. So make sure you get that up on the magnet so that we don't lose any of those. Most machine suppliers will allow you to purchase all of these pieces, but let's be honest, finding the exact right screw is kind of a nightmare. Ugh even more junk. Look at that. So all this crap here is also coated with the oil. So that's where these Q-tips really come in handy because I don't actually want to dry it completely. You know, I'm just trying to move those bits out. So we're just getting into all of those little crevices. This is again, the underside of our feed dogs. Let's flip that back over. There we go, and we're gonna get that side of it as well. Great, great. Okay, and now, just like with the throat plate, I'm gonna examine from the side, the profile view, and the teeth, the individual teeth here. This plate looks like it's in good shape for me, so I'm gonna keep this feed dog plate, and we're gonna just put that same guy back on. So let's set him aside too. Now that we've got this surface all cleaned up here, it's time to dive. We are going to get under the machine now. So I'm gonna clear my surface area here because we're gonna lift the whole head up now. I'm gonna close my little E secret door and lift. Okay, wow. So let's see what we got going on here. We got a lot going on here. So. Like I said before, this is the opening straight out to the floor. So all of this crap that's collecting here, this is stuff that's coming off of the fiber from the thread and the fabric. And I am just gonna reach down in there with a disposable rag and just kind of get that junk out of there. So I've got a garbage can under here as well. I'm just sort of dumping that in there. And Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to carefully try to blow some of this goop back there. Yep. Yep. That went about as well as anticipated, but that's okay. And try to get some of that cleared out. Okay, cool. Good enough. That's all I need there. Now we're gonna get a little messy. As you can see, my oil trough has stuff floating in it, little threads, little sequins, little pizzazz, but also it's very yellow. So just to give you a frame of reference, this little beauty here is fresh. What color is that? It's clear. <laughs> so. Obviously, we need to get this drained out and get a fresh oil bath into this uh, reservoir. That's where the bucket comes in. So I've got my kitchen mopping bucket and I'm gonna set it right under here because right above here is a large screw 
holding the bottom of the reservoir sealed. So exactly like a bathtub drain, I'm going to unscrew that screw and then there's about a quarter size hole in the bottom of this reservoir and it's just going to start leaking all of that oil out. Then we'll get rid of that oil and refill it with the clean stuff. So let's get in there. All right, I've broken out my big screwdriver, which is going to give me a little bit more leverage because this is a pretty tight screw here. And I'm just diving right down in. All right, and then we're going to get this guy going. And I'll probably have to reach in and grab it as well. There we go. So yes, you are going to get, okay, and I can already, oh, I can hear it. It's already going. This is so fun. I don't do this very frequently. Honestly, I probably haven't done this draining the oil and refilling with queen in two years. So as you can see from the color of the oil, probably have waited too long. So definitely good to know. I'm also kind of hoping that some of this grime and threads and sequins will also find their way down into that bucket. And they, they are, that's really good. Already I see that we've got most of our oil drained out here. So now I'm going to use my Q-tips and kind of push some of the, I've even got pins down here. Oh, look at that. We're going to push some of this junk sort of to the center so that I can grab that out with a paper towel. I'm also running this Q-tip along the edge of the gasket down here. So there's a little rubber gasket around the edge that the machine sits on. Ooh, yeah, and as I do that, look at all that. Gross, gross, gross. So actually, I'm gonna keep on grabbing some new Q-tips and just keep pushing all of that along. That's great. Ooh, this is awesome. Little day at the spa for our little Juki here today. So some of this won't uh, fit through that little hole at the bottom where the oil came out. So I'm just sort of picking it up myself with this and any other crud that's going to get in the way. Now I'm going to reach in carefully with my paper towel if there's any pins and just sort of dry, not quite dry up, but sort of push any of that other dirty sediment that I'm seeing at the bottom of the machine. Yeah, oh, that's good. And especially right around that drain, uh, because that's where a lot of that sediment is gonna pull. Okay, great. And then finally, there are little, couple of little indents in the machine like that one. I'm just gonna push that and sort of force that oil out. That's good. Great, great, great. Awesome. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get as much as you can. Great. Awesome. All right. Now we are ready to load it back up with some of our fresh new oil. So what have we got here? Lily White sewing machine oil, low viscosity just regular machine. It's well filtered um, because it's going to be running through all of these intricate little metal parts of our machine. So just a nice classic industrial sewing machine. Ooh, that's a tight seal right there. Let's try to get our screwdriver in there. There we go. And then if we look back down into the machine, we can see here just barely written in the middle. Here is our high mark and our low mark. So we're gonna fill it right up there to our high mark. That won't actually take very much oil. Oh, ha! Just kidding, what did we forget to do? We gotta put this guy back in. So this is our little drain plug. So let's set that back in and get that screwed in and then we will put our new clean oil in. And make sure it's pretty tight. Give it a few good cranks. And I'm gonna give it one more crank with my larger. Ah, there we go, perfect. 
Okay. Now we're ready. Wow. Whew. Oh, that looks nice. That really looks nice. So clean. Great. There we go. All the way up. Oh, that's beautiful. Perfect. Okay. That is everything that we need to do underneath the machine. So now, uh, because I am covered in oil, I am going to wash my hands and then we're going to get everything set back up. So throat plate and all of our pieces back in order. Just before I put the head back down, let's take a look right here. Can you see this little tube? This little guy is still full of the old oil. Now, oil is running throughout the machine. This just happens to be where we can see it. So this is a good reminder to us that once we get all of the pieces back together up top side, we are going to run some fabric through for a while to get our new oil running throughout our system. Okay, let's drop this guy back down. Okay, come here. Alrighty. Okay, let's pull all of my pieces back together and get them going in the right order. First, we have our feed dogs and we're gonna need to get to those holes to put our screws back in right there. So we've got our little screws. Let's get these guys little set up. The good thing is with many of these parts, they are directional, so you shouldn't be able to put them back on the wrong way since the screws can only align in a certain way. Ooh, there we go. And I'll get both of them set in before I tighten them both either way. <laughs> this isn't tedious at all. <laughs> there we go. And we wanna make sure, of course, again, that we tighten all the way. You don't need to over tighten, but we certainly need to make sure that everything is nice and flush and lining up exactly. These pieces coming together has a huge impact on the smoothness of our sewing. Now, we're ready to drop this plate on top. Again, you can only fit it on one way because it fits together with the teeth. So let's grab those screws. One, two, perfect, and back in we go. This is another, oopsies, this is another reason that I keep the screws for the presser foot and needle just in their kind of sockets already because I don't want to mix them up. A lot of these screws are similar size and it's important that we keep them all fitting back into exactly the place that they came from. Here we go, here we go. And again, tight enough, but no need to over tighten. And don't get frustrated by the angles here. Everybody struggles to get these seated back in. So just be patient, don't get frustrated. No one looks cool doing this. Okay, awesome. And then we can slide that right back over. Almost there. Let's lift our presser foot and get that back on. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna have to take that all the way out. There we go, perfect. And then I'll make sure that I lower the presser foot connection so that that's nice and seated there, great. And there we go, perfect. And I am, you see what I just did there where I ran the screwdriver over the needle? That was because I am at an odd angle here and I'm trying to make sure that the indent or scarf is facing the body of the machine because that's how most industrial needles need to be oriented, mine included. And then 
we'll get it threaded up and we'll be ready to turn the machine on and do a little bit of practice zone. Great machine is on and I've got a hardier scrap, which is a, a jean bottom here. And I'm gonna make sure everything's tight, everything looks good. Check all of my threading. Whenever I lift up the head of the machine, I'm gonna always make sure that I've checked all of my thread, thread track and tensioner to make sure that everything's still threaded up correctly. And now we are just gonna run this for a minute here. And I really like to get it going. Our little thread here which is fine the point of this is not the sewing the point is to get that new oil flooded through the machine that little bit that's left inside of the actual moving parts when we change out the reservoir we can't do a lot about that it's okay that it's getting mixed in with the new oil it's just a little bit not a big deal Let's take a look at our bobbin. Oh, <laughs> everyone's favorite. <laughs> Let's grab a new bobbin. Ready to rock. Okay, let's get it running. Oopsies. So like I said, we're just running. We're just running it through. That's just to get that new oil pumping through the machine. I'm also listening. I'm listening as the machine runs. I'm gonna move everything off of my table. As the machine gets faster and faster, the vibrations get heavier. So we're gonna move everything off of that surface so that all that we can hear is the machine itself. And I'm, I'm listening for a somewhat medium to high pitched, consistent, smooth whir. That's what I'm, I'm listening for. I'm listening for inconsistencies and just a medium range mechanical sound. I'm also feeling I intentionally grabbed the bottom of a pant because I like to use a circular piece of fabric when I'm doing this. I'm not actually wanting to start and stop. I'm not even really looking at the stitching or the tension. I can mess with that later. I'm feeling the feed and I'm listening to the sounds it's making as it's being fed through and I'm running it for an extended period of time by coming around and around and around this circle. That's what I'm doing here. This is like our version of the stethoscope, right? That's what we're listening for here. We wanna see how the machine's heart is beating and make sure that everything is good to go. And it does sound good to me. Thank you for joining me for cleaning my machine. I would love questions, comments, anything that you saw or thought why did I do that? Could I do that differently? I would love suggestions on this because cleaning is really personal and everybody does it a different way. So I'm glad that you got to see the way that we do it here. And I'd love to hear from you about how you would. Thanks so much. Like, subscribe, all the things. See you at the next one.